What up techies? Welcome back to the channel for everything technology of vast, present, and future. When Isaac Newton first proposed his theory of gravity, he described it as a force that pulls objects together. However, we now know that gravity is not a force at all. Instead, it is a curving of space-time caused by mass and energy. This new understanding of gravity has far-reaching implications. For instance, it could lead to a new theory of unification, which could explain all the forces of nature in a single framework. It could also help us to understand the origins of the universe and the nature of black holes. In short, this is a very exciting time for nerds everywhere. Thanks to this new discovery, our understanding of gravity will never be the same again. When it comes to gravity in the cosmos, we can imagine the sun's gravity keeping the planets in their orbits. And we all know about the strong gravitational pull near a black hole. The so-called force of gravity is easy to understand because it only requires mass to exert its influence. If you step on a scale to find out how much you weigh, the number on the scale represents the Earth's gravity on your mass, or your weight on Earth. It's easy to see how this force works. It wasn't Einstein who discovered that everything in a gravitational field falls at the same rate. Galileo was the one who first concluded that all objects released together in the absence of an atmosphere would fall at the same rate regardless of their mass. Apollo on the moon performed a famous experiment to test this theory simultaneously. This is the key to understanding the theory of general relativity. The same thing would happen for any object, regardless of its mass or its physical makeup. This is known as the equivalent principle. So why do the two objects fall together and land simultaneously? It's because they're not falling, they're standing still, and there is no force acting on them, according to Einstein's theory that gravity is not a force between objects. Moonwalker astronaut Scott dropped a hammer and a feather, and they both glided to the ground and impacted the ground at the same time. According to Einstein's theory, matter warps not only the fabric of space, but also time. This phenomenon is referred to as space-time, and any object in space warps this space-time. Einstein believed that more massive objects do not pull on smaller objects, but rather that the objects are being pushed down by the space above them, and that there is no such thing as a gravitational force. The three dimensions of space, length, width, and height, along with the fourth dimension, time, make up what is known as continuum space-time. The more massive an object is, the more significantly it can distort the space around it. Because of the relative motion of the two different types of objects, Einstein believed that apples fell from trees, and that planets orbited stars. Gravity can be thought of as undulations in the space-time continuum. These undulations can be observed everywhere. You can see how the mass of the Earth warps space-time and creates a kind of gravity well if you imagine the Earth to be a grid of space-time. If you do this, you can visualize how gravity works. Any object located around this mass, including the Moon, will experience a pull in the direction of the gravity well. Although the Moon's mass also distorts space-time, the gravitational field between the Earth and the moon is not strong enough to bring the moon closer to the earth. The occurrence is comparable to an apple dropping from a tree. Engineers were able to create a gravity slingshot by using warped space-time, or the gravity around other planets in our solar system. This allows the spacecraft to be propelled in a different direction at a faster speed. The closer an object is to a planet, and the stronger its gravity is, the quicker it will start moving once it reaches that location. But what exactly is this gravitational field that people talk about? We discussed it earlier, but would you say it is not a force? A gravitational field, also called a force field in space, is produced by any object in space that possesses mass and contributes to the formation of the field. Because of its lower mass in comparison to the planets, the moon's gravitational field is significantly weaker. It is possible to believe that there is no gravitational field at work in orbit around our large blue planet. However, even though it is easy to believe that there is no such field at work, the National Space Station, on the other hand, is affected by the gravity of the Earth. The surprising thing is that the effective gravity in orbit around the planet is practically identical to the one on the planet's surface. It is approximately 90%, as much in orbit as it is on the planet's surface. Microgravity is the condition in which it seems as though people and objects do not have any weight at all. An example of this would be if you weighed 100 kilograms on Earth, but had a space ladder extending to the International Space Station. If everything falls in the same direction regardless of its mass, the result is an astronaut floating freely in space. Because everything, including the International Space Station, is falling together simultaneously in the vacuum of space, and it makes it appear that astronauts are floating in space, far from any gravitational source, as well as an astronaut free-falling in the gravitational field of a massive body, would have the same experience. Everything in space, including the space station, satellites, and everything else, is in perpetual motion toward Earth. 
In addition, even though it is falling toward Earth, the International Space Station is moving relatively quickly, exerting only about 28% of the planet's gravitational force. A few different lines of inquiry can be pursued to demonstrate that Albert Einstein was correct in his assertion that objects with mass distort the fabric of the universe. If you could navigate your way to the center of the planet, you would find that there is no gravity there. This is because you would be removed from the space-time curvature that occurs at the center of an object that has mass. As a consequence of this, you would be able to circumnavigate the center of the planet without experiencing any sense of weight. However, as you began to make your way back to the surface, you would begin to feel the curvature of space-time caused by the mass of the Earth and the effect that this had on your body. This is because the Earth's mass causes space-time to curve. One of these phenomena is referred to by the term gravitational lensing, which describes the effect. This occurs when a massive celestial body causes a large enough curvature of space-time that the light around the object appears visibly bent. However, looking through a camera lens, you will see that gravitational lensing occurs when a massive object, such as a galaxy, warps the space around it into rings of light. Interestingly, this has helped us find other galaxies and objects in space that we wouldn't otherwise see without gravitational lensing. There is a lot of evidence to support general relativity. Einstein may have this whole gravity thing figured out. However, the big problem is that general relativity is incompatible with quantum mechanics in its current form. Einstein's cross is a famous example that shows a gravitationally lensed quasar that sits directly behind the center of a galaxy. Four images of quasar appear in the foreground due to the strong gravitational lensing of quantum gravity, a branch of theoretical physics that seeks to describe gravity by quantum mechanics. Currently, no such theory is universally accepted and confirmed by experience. However, that is not all researchers understand. They also understand that at some point inside a black hole, Einstein's theory breaks down and stops functioning properly. Scientists in Hawaii used three of the world's largest telescopes to observe a blue star dubbed SO2 as it came within a few light years of the event horizon of a black hole. Sagittarius is a star in the middle of the Milky Way galaxy in its 16-year orbit. If Einstein's theory were correct, the black hole would warp space-time and extend the wavelength of the light from the star. The waves of light would stretch out as the intended gravitational pull, and the black hole would drain, gain energy, and cause the light from the star to shift from blue to red. They predict that within the next 10 years, the theory of general relativity will be stretched to its limits, and another genius will come along and show us where Einstein was incorrect. Scientists are searching for a curvature of space-time that is so extreme that the theory of general relativity collapses. For centuries, we have believed that gravity is a force. It's something that pulls us down, keeps us tethered to the Earth. It's what makes things fall when we drop them. But what if gravity isn't a force? What if it's something else entirely? According to a new study, that may be the case. Scientists have announced that they have discovered that gravity is not a force after all. This new understanding of gravity could lead to revolutions in our comprehension of space and time. The implications of this discovery are huge, and we can only begin to imagine the possibilities for further research. It's exciting times for nerds everywhere. Please let us know in the comments what you think the future holds for understanding gravity, and give us a like if you enjoyed the video. When we learn something new and exciting about our universe, you'll find out about it here, so stay tuned by subscribing. Thank you for watching and we will see you back here soon.